Hi guys. So, a couple people on the Soylent forums were asking for a video of someone making Soylent that tastes good. So I thought I'd make my Soylent for you guys. So this formula is intended for um, a male of approximately my body type. Um, if you have a different body than mine, then your ideal formula will probably look different. Um, you'll probably have different macronutrient balances than me, um, and if you're a female, then you'll also have different micronutrient balances. So, our first ingredient here is maltodextrin, and I am going to use about 300 grams of this. I'm going to measure that out with a kitchen scale. Um, it's electronic, it measures in grams. And so I put the bowl on it. I zero the scale. And then I grab the spoon and start measuring out multidextra. Now, some people will use uh, oat powder in addition to maltodextrin in their recipe. The benefit of that is that the starch in the oat powder is a slower burning carbohydrate than maltodextrin. Um, maltodextrin is a pretty slow carb. It's not as fast as sugar. Um, you don't get like a high and then a crash. Um, but Starch is even slower. And so the problem with my maltodextrin only mix here is that I need to eat this uh, pretty often throughout the day, like every couple hours, in order to um, not be hungry. Um, the reason I didn't include oat powder is that oat powder also has a substance in it called phytic acid. Um, phytic acid is an anti-nutrient, and what it does is it binds to zinc, calcium, iron, and possibly other minerals, people aren't sure, um, and prevents them from being absorbed. Uh, so that's why I didn't include oat powder. So, the next ingredient is soy protein. Um, this is from Optimum Nutrition. I bought this on Amazon. Um, and so because I'm using soy protein, this recipe is almost vegan. Um, but it's not quite vegan because there are, um, for example, in this soy protein, I believe that they used uh, lecithin than derived from dairy. Um, they could have used a derived soy, they could have used soy lecithin. than that would have made sense. I don't know why they didn't do that. But there are a couple things like that in my recipe. So, to, so I'm going to zero the scale again. And I'm going to put about 70 grams of this soy protein. So the next ingredient is canola oil. I bought this at Kroger. And the reason I'm using canola oil, um, first I used olive oil, but I found that this hurt the taste because olive oil has a bit of funny taste, which is great in certain contexts, but not in this one. Um, so canola oil is relatively tasteless. Um, however, 
However, I heard some people on the Soylent forums talking about how canola oil has something in it called erythric acid, which was found to be toxic in rats. However, it's not been found to be toxic in humans, but it could be, right? Um, and so this is a concern about consuming large amounts of canola, canola oil. Um, so at your discretion, you might use a different oil. Um, I might too. Um, the other thing about canola oil, it has a lot of omega-3 fatty acids, and you probably know that omega-3 fatty acids are a kind of fatty acid that we need that isn't present in large amounts in a typical Western diet. Um, now, so that's good, right? Except that if you, if you ate only canola oil, like as your sole source of fat, like if you were using it in soy lump, then you might get too much omega-3 fatty acid which is also bad for you. Um, now conversely, if you were to use a different oil than this, you would probably want to add a source of omega-3 fatty acids such as flaxseed oil or fish oil. Um, you only need a little bit. Uh, the USDA thinks that you need one or two grams of omega-3 per day. Okay, so I'm going to add about 50 grams of this canola oil. Um, I'm using a lot because I have a high metabolism and I need to get a lot of fat in order to maintain my emaciated figure. Okay. So I measured out the canola oil. Um, I measured it out into a separate container from um, the dry ingredients. And eventually I'm going to mix them, but not yet. So the next thing is fiber. I'm using psyllium husk powder. Um, I bought this at Whole Foods. It's pretty cheap and I'm going to use about 30 grams of it. So the FDA recommends that you get about 14 grams of fiber for every 1,000 calories you consume. So this recipe is going to have 2,000 calories in it. This is uh, right now. Um, so most fiber supplements have things other than fiber in them, and you need to take those into account when you're formulating your recipe. Um, you're, you're hopefully uh, using a spreadsheet to keep track of all of your ingredients and all of the nutrients that they have in them. Um, now the psyllium husk fortunately doesn't have much in it. Okay. So now we're starting on the macronutrients. So for potassium, I'm using Now Foods Potassium Gluconate. I got this on Amazon. And I'm going to use about 25 grams of it. Um, and I don't remember exactly how many grams of potassium that is, but it's a much smaller number. Um, most of the weight of the potassium gluconate is not from the actual potassium. So I'm zeroing the scale again. And there it is. Um, so now I'm just putting off the ingredients that I've already used so that I can keep track of what I've put in so far. Okay. So the next thing I'll put in is sulfur. Um, this is Gero Formula's MSM Sulfur Powder. I got this on Amazon. And I'm going to use about 2 grams. Um, and that's not based on an FDA recommendation. That's based on 
uh, how many rods used. Um, the FDA has no recommended daily allowance of sulfur because it's always present in adequate amounts in an ordinary diet. Um, but um, again, MSM sulfur isn't pure sulfur. I'm getting less than two grams of actual sulfur here. So if you're using a different form of sulfur, then you'll need to know that. So here's the two grams. I'm just using the gram scoop that came with the product. And so the next thing is Swanson monosodium phosphate. This is a source of phosphorus. It's also a source of sodium, which isn't really desirable, but it is. Um, and so I got this on Amazon, and unfortunately, last I checked, it was out of stock. Um, so you might have to use a different phosphorus supplement if you can't find it. But in any case, I'm going to use three grams of this. And again, I'm using the gram scoop that came with the product. Okay. So next is magnesium. Now, the problem with magnesium, the FDA uh, tolerable upper limit for magnesium is actually less than their recommended daily allowance for men. Um, so, logical contradiction, FDA, right? Well, so the reason they did it that way is that their upper limit is um, the most they think you should get from a supplement, um, whereas their RDA includes what you're getting from food. Um, the, issue, the issue here is that magnesium is really easy to overdose on, um, and the overdose symptoms are extremely unpleasant. Um, so, so you should be careful with this. Uh, so the upper limit for magnesium is 300 milligrams, and here I have a 500 milligram magnesium supplement that I bought from GNC. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to give myself 300 milligrams of magnesium which is less than the RDA for males, so I might be experimenting with that more in the future. But what I'm going to do, um, this is a pill capsule filled with powder, and I'm going to, uh, it comes in two segments, I'm going to break it open to get the powder out. Um, I'm sorry that I'm doing this off screen, but it's sort of a twisting motion. And there, and then I poured the powder out onto the cap of the bottle. And so I'm just going to eyeball about three fifths of this and put it into my soylent mix. Okay. So I'm looking for my spoon. I'm grabbing my spoon and. I'm again eyeballing about three fifths of it, separating it off like this. Let's see. Yeah, separate it off a little bit there. And so the smaller portion I'm just going to throw it away and then put the rest in the mix. Okay, so uh, this is l methionine from Source Naturals. I got this on Amazon. And l methionine so methionine is an amino acid. It's an essential amino acid, and it's the one that soy protein doesn't have a whole lot of. And so I'm just adding this amino acid um, to my mix. And I'm going to use a quarter teaspoon of it, which 
is, which will give me 750 milligrams. So the next thing in the mix is going to be a half a teaspoon of salt. Um, and I'm adding salt in order to get three essential nutrients. Um, salt is sodium fluoride, so I'm getting sodium and fluoride. Um, so in three grams of salt, there's two grams of chloride and one gram of sodium. That's just how the atomic weights work out, right? And so it's just um, it's just a a one and a half to one ratio of chloride to sodium, um, however much salt you use. Um, so so those are two. The third essential nutrient that I'm getting from this is iodine, um, and that's in here because most salt in the U.S. is fortified with iodine so that we get iodine. And the amount that I'm using is going to have enough iodine. Okay, so then for the rest of the nutrients, um, I have a bunch of pills here, and I'm not going to add, so some people will crush up the pills and put them in the soil and mix, and um, I'm not going to do that because I found that it hurts the taste slightly. Um, so I'm just going to take the pills. Um, so the first pill, um, I'm using a Centrum Adults Under 50 multivitamin which I bought at CVS, and it looks like this, and I'm going to break this in half and take each half at a different time throughout the day. So, choline. This is Nature's Way Choline. Got this on Amazon. The pills look like this, and I'm going to use one and a half of them. So, um, break the whole one into halves, then I have three halves, I'll take them throughout the day. Okay. Vitamin K, I uh, got this at GNC, just going to take one. Okay, so uh, vitamin A. Uh, this I got at CVS, and it's from a fish oil, and so it's not vegan. But what I'm going to do is, if you look at these pills, there are these little uh, gel caps full of liquid. That's the fish oil. So I'm going to add it to my canola oil. So I have this, and I'm going to uh, puncture it with a knife. I'm not trying to uh, like slice it or anything. I'm just puncturing it. Um, and so there, I successfully did that. And then I'm going. I've made a little hole, and I'm going to squeeze out the fish oil into the canola oil through this hole. Um, you could also just take the pill if you want. That's fine. Okay, next thing. Vitamin C. Um, got this at CVS. I'm going to take one. Okay. Uh, calcium plus vitamin D. Um, got this at CVS. 
I'm going to take one and a half of these uh, broken into three halves throughout the day. Okay, so those are all of the ingredients except for flavorings. So for flavorings, I'm going to add a teaspoon of cinnamon. So that goes into the dry ingredients. And then I'm going to add a teaspoon of vanilla. And that goes into the wet ingredients. So now one of the issues that people run into with Soylent is they'll find that their mixture doesn't stay together. This is the case with my first soil and recipe. Um, and the cure for mixes that don't stay together is emulsifiers. Um, I'll say that again, emulsifiers, because I didn't say it clearly the first time. So, uh, an example of an emulsifier is less, less of them, which is in my soy protein. And I found that um, I got a stable mix once I started using this protein, and I assume it's because of the lecithin that's already in there. Um, some people have apparently experimented with adding emulsifiers themselves, and maybe they got good results that way. Um, but in any case, um, I'm now going to just show you what the dry ingredients look like. And so I'm going to mix them together with a whisk. Um, try to do this really thoroughly. Um, an issue that I run into a lot is there, there's a bunch of maltodextrin and it's all at the bottom, and often that doesn't get mixed in adequately with the rest. But okay, so there's my mixed dry ingredients. So now I'm going to add the wet ingredients, which is to say the canola oil, the fish oil, and the vanilla. So I poured them in, and now I'm just going to use a sort of a sort of a pressing motion here, right? Um, this is the best way that I've found to get the oil to mix in, and what you'll see in your mix, I don't know if you can see it on the video, but it's clumpier than it was before. Uh, those are clumps where the um, oil has, um, you know, clumped up with together with the dry ingredients. And I want to try to get the clumps small. Um, you don't want to drink them um, just because the clumps don't give a nice texture, but um, as long as you're unclumping at some point in your process, like in your blender or whatever, then it's okay. Okay, so, so in this bowl, I have my finished soil mix. And what I want to do is store this and avoid, avoid getting it wet. Um, and it should keep for a long time that way. But now I'm going to mix it into a drink. So after experimenting, I found that a good portion for me was uh, two thirds of a cup of soy um, and I mix it in a one a one to one and a half ratio with water. So one soil to one and a half waters. So that'll give me a cup of water. So I'm gonna use a blender. Uh, you get the best you get the best mixing that way. But you could also, for example, uh, use a blender bottle if you're on the go. And this actually works pretty well as long as you shake really hard for a long time. But right now I'm using the blender and so I'm going to add a cup of water to the blender cup, and I'm using the measurements that are given on 
the uh, on the water cup itself. So I added a cup of water, and now I'm just uh, scooping out two thirds of a cup of sediment. Um, it's good to add the water first because that helps the blender when it's starting up to have the liquid on the bottom. But okay, so here it is. And off to the side here, I'm going to put it on my blender and then just blend for a little bit. My blender is not plugged in, so I am plugging it in. Okay, and here goes. And that should be good. There it is. So pouring it into a glass. And there is my soil. So I recommend that um, after you've drank your soylent, you chew some gum. And the reasons are to uh, keep your teeth and jaw muscles in practice. Um, if you're, if you're eating soylent exclusively. If you're still eating food, this doesn't matter, right? Um, but it's also, um, this brand of gum contains xylitol, which is good for your teeth. And, um, and it's a pleasant thing to do after you're done eating. So uh, that's it. Hope this was helpful.